that this meeting has been duly called and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6.03. If everyone would please stand for our invocation and our pledges. Please bow with me. Most gracious and loving God, bless us with your presence. Bless us with your peace. Give us wisdom and discernment in our discussions tonight so that we may make the best decisions for our school district. Bless our students, teachers, our staff, and our administration. And we pray. Please join me in honoring our country, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. And now our state. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Brown. <laughs> Item 2B, Special District Recognition, District Support Staff Ambassador Awards. Dr. Stockton. I'm going to ask Dr. Hines, our Deputy Superintendent, to come and uh, make the announcements. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, it is an honor to be here tonight uh, to present to the Board of Trustees for Special Recognition by you uh, some of our outstanding employees in our district support departments as recommended by Dr. Stockton. And as you know, you've been doing the uh, Board of Trustees Ambassador Awards for different departments, and I know that you know that this uh, the district also has other departments that provide uh, great support to our uh, schools and our teachers, and tonight we're going to uh, recognize some of the members that make that possible. From the... Uh, departments that are communication departments, the curriculum and instruction department, finance department, human resources department, and the technology department. We'll start with, uh, I'm going to start with the communications employee, Amanda Embry. Amanda's here. I'm going to ask Amanda to come on up. And then when I call names, you'll, you'll want to come up. Amanda is uh, in the print shop, and she goes above and beyond to ensure that the print shop runs smoothly. She's always willing to go the extra mile for our campuses and departments and all while wearing a smile. Her outstanding work ethic contributes to the department and makes her a valuable employee. We're thankful. Thank you. I know Amanda's got some family here and support here tonight, so if y'all want to stand up. Reckon so. From the curriculum and instruction ambassadors are Dolly Renard and Angie Kennedy. If they would come up. Now, Dolly has just received her 25-year pen this year, and when people and when people call or arrive at the assessment center, uh, and and it's always busy at the assessment center with all the tests we give, uh, they are greeted by Dolly, who always has a smile and loves helping each person she comes in contact with. She exemplifies professionalism and a commitment to excellence. Uh, also from the curriculum department is Angie Kennedy, who works in the special education department. She's worked uh, in the Conroe Independent School District for 14 years. She's known as the heartbeat special education department. She's reliable and is always willing to help anything that needs to be done. And Angie is not only dedicated and helpful, she also has a positive influence on others. Have some support here tonight. They want, to, they want to stand up. Angie has some folks with her tonight. Yeah. Next is Janet Bradley, who represents the <laughs> finance department. Come on up. Now, Janet's been dealing with the diagnosis and an ongoing treatment of cancer for over a year. And while doing this, she still maintained a, a fantastic attitude during this time and has never let this huge challenge affect her duties at work. In fact, she has considered her work and her associates in the office to be positive therapy in dealing with this personal medical issue and challenge. 
We're thankful for all that Janet does. <laughs> Janet has some, some folks with her. <laughs> the Human Resources Ambassador Representative is Olivia Ramon. Come on up, Olivia. Ms. Ramon is a hard worker who is time conscientious and pays particular attention to details to ensure that the job is done well. Her leadership skills inspire others to meet the expectations of the job. Often her peers turn to her for answers and to help problem solve situations that arise. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, y'all stand up. <laughs> Next is Hilda Flores. Hilda's going to come on up, who works in the technology department, and she is also deserving of this outstanding recognition. Ms. Flores has 31 <laughs> years of service in the Conroe Independent School District. She currently, and most everybody knows her, is the, the voice behind the technology help desk. And so uh, <laughs> that's a big job. And uh, Billy goes the extra mile to make sure that the questions and problems get resolved as quickly as possible. And she's always willing to step in wherever she is needed. Uh, she does a great job for us, and we're thankful to have her. There's some folks here for yeah. So thanks for being here. <laughs> Each of these employees is an ambassador for the district by performing their daily tasks with an unwavering commitment to the children, the parents, and the employees of the Conroe Independent School District. And we are fortunate to have them as a member of our team and our family. So thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Item 2C, Citizens Participation. Mrs. Ferris, has anyone registered to address the board? No. All right. And we will move on. Uh, if there is no objection, can we move item number 9, <laughs> Human Resources, Naming of Principal Wilkerson Intermediate up? <clears throat> Hearing no objection. Item nine, <laughs> naming a principal at Wilkerson Intermediate School, Dr. Stark. Well, it's my pleasure to um, recommend Kimberly Lanham this, uh, to you for principalship of Wilkerson Intermediate School. She's currently the assistant principal at Wilkerson. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by raising your hand. This is unanimously. Congratulations. Mr. Sanders, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Stockton, thank you for the opportunity to serve as the next principal of Wilkerson Intermediate. I would also like to thank Dr. Gibson and Dr. Hines for believing in me and providing different opportunities to help me grow as a leader. The time I have spent in CISD under the great leadership of Marie Hartley and Paula Green has prepared me to be the next instructional leader of Wilkerson Intermediate. As we journey into the new school year, I will leave with passion and admiration so that together we will continue to learn, grow, and inspire others to achieve their greatest potential. Thank you. I 
I would also like to say that I brought my son tonight here. Um, he just graduated from A&M and will be attending law school. All right, item three, consent agenda. Does anyone have any item they'd wish to pull from the consent agenda? All right, if not, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? And all those opposed, it's unanimous approval. All right. Next item is back to 2A, if we're ready. Are we okay? Do we still have some in the way? Okay. Let's not move. Okay. okay. We can wait a little longer. We can right? wait That's longer. That's fine. Mr. Paulson, go ahead. We can, we can move something else up. For Why don't we give it 15 more minutes? Item four. Yeah. If we have anybody who's on their way. Item four. You think we're okay then? This is obviously live. Okay. <laughs> it is live. It's not memorized. All right. Yeah. Item 2A, special district recognition, 2013 UIL 5A baseball state champions, the Woodlands High School baseball team. Ms. Colshin, principal of the Woodlands High School, if you'll come up and introduce uh, our special guest. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, Mr. Sanders, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize a very special group of young men who have uh, done a great job in representing our school and our community. Um, I'd like to introduce the best baseball coach in the United States. Uh, high school baseball coach. I can't speak for the professional level. Um, Mr. Uh, Ron Eastman to introduce our, our players who are here tonight. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Members of the board, we'd like to thank you for honoring um, our team and, and asking us up here. It, it is truly a um, an honor and a privilege to serve Conroe Independent School District as teachers and coaches at the Woodlands High School. Uh, it truly was a blessing this year uh, to um, be on just a small part of these young men's journey uh, through life and um, along the way pick up a, a 5A state championship. It was well, well um, deserved, well worked for uh, throughout the entire season. Uh, We'll go ahead. We're, because of traffic problems, and I almost got caught myself, or I did get caught, but because of traffic and a big baseball tournament, uh, we're real light on numbers. But I do want to bring up uh, my assistant coaches, uh, Shane Graves, Barry Wilson, Chris Harden, Chad Roselle. These are the, the four coaches that will be here tonight. part of our program at, at the high school. Um, the, the members we have here today, uh, Michael McKinstry, Chris Andritzis, Dylan Warren, Alex Hale, and Casey Schneider. All, all five of these young men will be back next year, which is a good thing for us. Um, we, don't, we had about 17 seniors. I think Coach Jeff Lilly is going to walk through the door right now, or somebody in a green shirt to look like <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was one of those who got caught up in <laughs> Definitely. And the last thing I just want to say, and I've said it at every every opportunity I've had, whether it be in the media or whether it be at a, an event like this, is that this, these young men were a, um, and are, one of the, the highest character group of young men I've ever been around. Not only did they represent... Um, their school and their community on the baseball field, but they also represented their school and their community off the baseball field in the community in the school, which is what we really what we expect of them being members of uh, an athletic program at the Woodlands High School. So uh, again, we'd like to thank you for um, honoring us here this evening, and um, this is our state champion group.
for the Board of Trustees, I'd like to present this plaque to the 5A State Champions for 2013. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be able to do this, but um, you're a special team, and I'm sure we'll all appreciate seeing this in the halls of the Woodlands High School, and best of luck on your future journeys, too. <laughs> Do the wall. Congratulations. 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 How are you? We won't see you again here again until next year, right? Yeah, we expect back. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, item 4A, curriculum and instruction, preliminary, secondary, tax, STAR, and EOC results, 2013. Dr. Stock. I'll ask Kathy <laughs> Gibson and Ms. Gail Drummond to come and present the yeah. results. Sure. Preliminary results. Preliminary. Good evening, uh, Ms. President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight, Mrs. Drummond and I would like to present the preliminary scores for STAR 3 through 8. Mrs. Drummond will present STAR end of course in secondary tax results. As you, as you are aware, this is our second year for the implementation of the STAR assessments, and most of the STAR data that we will show you tonight has a two-year trend. At this time, we would like to share our scores and how we compare to the state scores. And before I get started, I'd like to say a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. William Kelly. If you would stand, please. He, he is the one behind the scenes that crunches all these data and makes it, puts it into a format that, that, that you see tonight. So thank you, William. Um, as we look at these scores, I'm going to start from the Spanish scores and work over. One of the things I would like to remind you is that in this STAR platform that you've heard the phrase <laughs> met standard in the past, and now that translates to satisfactory performance. So these data that we're showing you, we've last year, 2012, compared to this year, 2013. Most of you, several of you also know that over the years that it has been our goal for our bilingual students to exit the bilingual program by third grade. And we call that, we say that we have an early exit program. So we want our numbers, we want to reduce our, our, num our, our numbers of students taking the Spanish assessments as our grade levels increase. I'd also like you to think that at each one of these grade levels, we tested about 4,000 students. So when you look at these Spanish uh, results, you see that last year this time, uh, we had a 46%. And um, we took a good hard look at our bilingual literacy classrooms, and we did a number of things to strengthen our language to literacy classrooms. You can see that we've made great progress. We have more progress ahead. Um, and this represents 277 students. Thank you. you can also see that we improved from last year with our English, taking our students that took the assessment in English, and we have clearly outperformed the state. With mathematics, we see a very similar trend. We have in our Spanish, our students that took the assessment in Spanish, we have 153 students. You can see that we have made great progress from last year this time, as well as we are outperforming the state. You can also see that uh, the state has a trend that they're somewhat flat, they gained the point. Um, we have increased from 82% to 88%, and we are, again, significantly outperforming the state. 
When we look at our fourth grade scores in our Spanish results, this number represents 106 students. And if you're, if you're following, then these numbers are decreasing. And although we, we still have some work to do, we still feel, um, we feel very good that most of our students, the majority of our students are taking the assessment in English. You hear again, you can see a slight trend at both the state and CISD. Um, where each one has lost a couple of points, but here again, we are significantly, significantly outperforming the state. We look at our writing, our, this, our, Spanish, score, our, our Spanish results represents 130 students. We're a little bit flat. Um, we are again working on uh, our writing skills with this, with the, with this group of students. Uh, you can see that there was a slight decline uh, with the Spanish scores at the state level. The state remained the same, but here again, we are significantly, significantly outperforming the state. In mathematics, Spanish results represents 58 students. And remember, we test about 4,000. <laughs> so here again, although we have work to do, we feel very proud that our students are um, taking the uh, assessment in English, and here again, you can see the pattern. It's very obvious that our, our students are doing very well, and we are greatly outperforming the state. When we get to fifth grade, I have to take a step back and remind you that last year this time, in our fifth and our eighth grade, our SSI grade levels, our student success initiative, and our students have three opportunities to pass the STAR assessment. Last year this time, they were only given one because it was a phase in. So we didn't feel it was, but we wanted to compare last year one administration to this year two administrations. So we'll start that trend now. When the scores came to us, they also came combined, English and Spanish. But I can tell you that only 25 of this group uh, took the uh, reading assessment in Spanish. And here again, you can see that um, we are, we are, our performance is very strong. Why did they come combined in fifth grade? You know, um, we really don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Fair enough. That's good for uh, <laughs> They don't That's usually, the they but this year they did. <laughs> they, they came combined. And we, well, may get it, we may get a, well, they may be separated later. Okay. Mathematics, same. 93%, uh, 87% the state. How many Spanish? Uh, Spanish, we had... 19, 19 students. Okay, fifth grade science, fifth grade science. Here again, we had a 20 students taking the fifth grade science assessment. Um, we, uh, we, we have 16 students that did not pass uh, the assessment. We know who those students are. Uh, we are following them to sixth grade and we will give them the support that they need. And here again, you can see that we are greatly outperforming the state. The state has stayed flat. We've moved up two points and uh, we have a very strong performance. In sixth grade, we do not have a Spanish uh, assessment that is provided by the state. So in mathematics, we have um, to see a slight, a slight dip with math at the state level. Uh, our performance is still strong, 87% in the state, 74%. And a similar trend, uh, we have 84% and 71%. Uh, so we're very proud of these scores. We, we still are uh, very focused on depth and rigor with our, our students and our teachers. And um, this is Drummond. Dr. Gibson, I have one quick question for you. The sure. podium in the sixth grade on the reading and the mathematics, I know there was a slight decline <laughs> at both the state level and the district level, is there a difference in the quality of the assessment or you mentioned rigor and I, I presumed, but I want to make sure that my presumption is correct, that the rigor of the exam is greater. We are not able to know the content of the assessment. Correct. Correct. But when we do talk about rigor, we talk about when we move from tax to star, star is a far more is an assessment that measures higher level thinking. Right. So when we talk about depth and rigor, we have to um, teach our students to think differently in order to uh, answer each item. 
But, 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 I, but agree. I, I'm sorry. I agree with your comment. Um, typically, when we look at the state and we see the exact same trend at the state level, right. and, and looking at the numbers of students, there's something going on. Yeah. There are several questions the on the test, test well, that nobody can answer. And I believe, as Dr. Gibson stated, to me, it's more we're, we're stepping up our game. Yes. We expect yes. there probably maybe a slight decline, but as we continue that depth and rigor that you described. Yes. And so often we should, you we will should. see that at a grade level. Yes. That is true. Okay. Could, could, could we flip back to fifth grade? Is that is that a problem? I just wanted to, and, and you pick any one, science at 20 or, or math, at, and I know they're together. Uh, but. Let's go back to that one that says 20% right there, <laughs> like whatever, whatever, right there science. in Spanish, okay, it's science. Okay, what you're saying is we're, you know, at 86% versus the state at 73, and we have what you would say is early promotion of English as a second language students in that group, and we're, you're, you're sliding the kids over there you're whipping up on the state's average, and, and this 20% affects a handful of kids. Yes. And I mean, one is too many. We, we right. all, uh, nobody's that's making that's any exactly excuses right. about those 16 or whatever you said, yes, but, but we are, uh, I mean, you know. Yes, that is. With those kids elevated in, I, I really would like a copy of this. I mean, this is the sure. kind of thing that our school district needs to, I mean, like show it rotary, you know, seriously. Mm -hmm. I am very mm -hmm. proud of them. Uh, congratulations Absolutely. to you and your teachers. And I know they like it. hate to see you coming because I know you push, 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 push. And, and, and I take that the way I meant it. Take that the way I meant it, okay. What, what was it? Somebody, somebody said to me, when both Kathy's come to your campus, you're in trouble. Okay, anyway. Yeah, but anyway, let, let me just say, uh, you know, it is. Let me start collecting your, my things. Your heart. Okay, okay. You, don't, you don't need to run anywhere from me because uh, uh, I appreciate all you do and all you accomplish. Thank you very much. It might have been a backhanded compliment, but I'm in it. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Good evening, President Sanders and members of the board. It's a pleasure for me to share our STAR scores with you. Um, and you will see similar trends um, in secondary. We actually see <clears throat> in reading, uh, we're significantly outperforming the state and we improved our scores from last year and there was a, a gain at the state level. Um, in writing, we're flat, but we're still outperforming the state very well. And in math, with 81% <clears throat> as compared to 71%, we're very pleased. In eighth grade, as you know, eighth grade is an SSI year. So the same scenario fits here our eighth graders in reading and math have taken the test twice as opposed to last year taking it once. We did very, very well. Um, with both test administrations, our reading score is 94%. Math is 96%. In science, we improved from last year, 85% as compared to the state, 75. And in social studies, 76 as compared to the state, 65. Now we get into end of course exams. And I'm glad that you had the discussion about rigor. Um, there is a difference in what we've been doing with end of course in English. The English test com is comprised of two tests. Reading and writing are separate, which is different from tax. We outperform the state in reading 77% as compared to 65%. In 2013, and you will see this pattern throughout all of the years, <laughs> the ninth graders took the test as well as students who took it last year and didn't pass. So in EOC, those are combined for your scores. In writing, we show a 60% as compared to the state's 48, keeping in mind that we had all of the kids testing this test in writing is much different than what the kids have had in the past. They write two essays. Tax was personal narrative. EOC is expository and narrative for the, for the English one. English two, we test 
And this was the first year that our kids took English II, POC. The kids wrote persuasive, expository, and then there was a field test, and it could have been a combination, but the kids don't know which essay is a field test. The difference in the English test also in writing, in tax, they can write two pages. On ELC, it's one. It's 26 lines. And this test is timed. It's a four-hour test where tax was completed. <clears throat> so not to mention the rigor. So just to give you a little frame of reference, we are pleased. We outperformed the state in both areas um, significantly, but we know that we have work to do. In mathematics, algebra one, we had an 86%, which we're really pleased. This is first time testers plus retesters. And in geometry, for the first year of taking geometry, 90%. In biology, 92% as compared to the state's 85%, and in chemistry, 88% as compared to 84. And then in social studies, 86% as compared to the state 75%. World history, 86% as compared to 70%. So we feel that our students have done very well. <clears throat> and we have work to do. And I, I can assure you that that work got started a while back. So we are, we're on it. The last year for tax has a report for you. For this last year's juniors, and we're very pleased in um, ELA, 97%. We outperformed the state. In math, 91% compared to the state's 89. You can see the trend at the state. We figure that math test was a little bit more difficult this year. And then in science, 98% as compared to 96 at the state level. And 99% in social studies, right with the state at 99%. So overall, we're very, very pleased. Now we have a ways to go, but we're ready. Thank you, Ms. Drummond. I had just, just yes. a, first, I want to say how thankful we all are for the great job y'all are doing. Um, my second question, we've heard a lot about STAR. I don't want to dive into a deep conversation, but I was just, just a few sentences. <clears throat> what was the general feedback from students? That's an interesting question. I think the kids overall, um, the comments that I received from principals, um, some kids were surprised. Um, they didn't you know they really meant what they said, that the test was going to be more rigorous. Um, I don't know that I heard negatives, really. Um, the audience participation William, at this you? point. <laughs> right. Right. In my small little pond, I, I did not hear any negative at all, and I think that was also a big part of that. It was the time uh, that it, it seemed like a big stressor to right. children. But I was right. just curious as to kind of some of the informal feedback that you had received. So, can can you explain to me they changed the law? They changed it to five tests. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, the English. The the English one and English two will be one test, one test. Where we've had reading and writing over the Okay. So we have English one and English two, algebra one, this history, and biology. Shared with you scores tonight for the first <laughs> test administration because we were very pleased with our results. That will be the last time we will see scores reported geometry so it's in the 11th grade <clears throat> right i mean that won't happen anymore in the court best history is an 11th grade course so it would be tested in the 11th on lc but other than that the others are fresh so it's being reduced from how much to five 15, 15. 
feedback's been very good on that. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then the credits, uh, you know, it, it's still four years of English and. So far, we're not, the graduation requirements don't go into effect until the following year, not 13, oh. 14, 14. So we're waiting for the State Board of Education to give us some so, direction. So we're still four by four? We're still four by four. Stay in the four. And there will be a lot of clarifications coming up in the next couple of months that we'll get to. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item 5A, amendment to the H2U agreement to provide employee clinic services in Conroe, Dr. Stock. Mr. Cox, if you'll come present that item. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the amendment to agreement for professional services to provide CISD employee health and wellness clinic services in Conroe. <clears throat> First on site, a subsidiary of HCA Hospital currently operates the Conroe ISD Health and Wellness Center located at Oak Ridge Elementary. But this facility has proven to be a real valuable benefit to our employees. But we believe that uh, access to uh, employee health and wellness clinic services in Conroe would increase utilization uh, of the <clears throat> of the employee clinic, which would benefit both our employees and the district. Under the proposed agreement, first on site would provide clinical services to our employees through Conroe Physician Services, located at 508 Medical Center Boulevard in Conroe. And this is this is actually attached to the Conroe Medical Center. It's in. Uh, and it's a very nice facility. I've been there. Uh, <clears throat> under the terms of this agreement, CISD will purchase eight hours per week of health and wellness clinic services for $250 per hour. As needed, CISD can increase the number of clinic service hours. Additionally, if we so choose, we can terminate the provision of clinical services with, at, at, at the Conroe location with 90 days notice. I recommend that you approve this benefit to our employees. Let's be approved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have a question. You, you said that um, we're purchasing eight hours per week. Correct. Is that correct? Um, on Exhibit C, schedule for clinic locations and hours. Would that be in the event we see the need to increase it to those hours? I believe that's the hour. Is that the hours of the other The location? first one is the hours of the current clinic. This is the same. This agreement. is part of the, uh, the master agreement. So those represent the hours for the existing clinic. Okay. If you see. Uh, it's item five then yeah, talks item, about. Right. So would you foresee or measure that at some point in time we would increase the hours? That would be strictly driven by utilization. Utilization. <laughs> And who would be monitoring that utilization to advise us? Well, I'll, I'll monitor it. Okay. Uh, we'll report it to the board monthly. Um, Mr. Cox, you're, you're, you mentioned it, and there is no question that uh, <laughs> the availability of health care and a reduced copay is going to be beneficial to our employees, and we're all for that always. I understand that. But you said it was going to benefit the district. and. I want to visit about that just a second because the other clinic, as we've determined, really hasn't benefited the district. I mean, it just in cold, hard fact terms, it really hasn't benefited us it monetarily. Is that correct? The fund is not benefit is not profitable. Okay, from and that. the the district actually is getting some benefit from it, but but the health fund is not now, and the district is funding that deficit so. Would you say the district is, when you say that the district is, is that in, um, in terms, absenteeism correct. and those kinds of things? Okay. okay. Well, it's the soft cost. Okay. The soft I understand dollars. that. I'll, I'll buy that. Um, let me ask this. What is the, in this clinic situation, uh, there's a contracted rate at the con contracts with, you know, you should with Sadler Clinic or with Conroe Physicians or whoever. Is it the same contracted rate that they see patients under? I mean, is it costing us on the backside the same amount, even though it's costing the employee the less? You well, understand what I'm saying? We're paying a flat fee of $250 an hour. Now, our, our clinic, our, under our Aetna health plan, we pay an average, I think it's $57 or $58 a visit. 
So bottom line is if we get four visits an hour, we're going to about break even. With the five, we're going to be a little bit profitable and over five better. Uh, and if we get under four, we're, we're losing. So there is, a, let, me, let me just clarify, and, and no, I didn't no, understand I say, it. I, when I say we're losing money, health fund. The health fund. <laughs> but let me but just, we're, fun, we're covering that. Definitely. Yeah, let me just clarify. If I go to my doctor under my, my Aetna plan, if, if I have Aetna, and, and, uh, and I pay my $25, okay, Aetna agrees to pay them 67 58 whatever the number is, okay, for the combination of the two is what the right. doctor's office received, okay? What you're telling me is they're receiving the $250 an hour plus the $10 each employee no, we goes. We get the $10. Pardon? We get the $10. So it's called, our flat cost is $250 an hour, no more but than less. Less whatever $10. I mean, if, I got, if, I if we have five visits, our cost is $200. Thank you. So the max that the district pays per hour, regardless of the services provided, is $250. Back. Now, if nobody goes, we still, we still pay, pay $250. $250. Right. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you, uh, Thanks Thompson. for the clarification. Any other discussions or questions? We have a motion and second. Discussion? All right. We would ask for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Powell. <laughs> Item 5B, bond referendum update, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Foster, if you'll come present that item, please. President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, this is our update for the 2008 bond referendum projects underway. We're going to start with the Conroe High School ninth grade campus. This project is uh, nearing completion. It opens for school again in August, uh, so it is it is on schedule tracking exactly like when uh, we would like it to. As you can see from this picture here, the exterior masonry is completed. Uh, we are beginning the, the plan the work to work on the exterior, set up the new landscaping, things of that nature now. The new bus loop, which is the bus driveway that goes around the entire campus, is uh, has made its way around the entire campus. The tie-ins to the driveways along uh, the main street are uh, in progress. You can see the interior of the building. This is the renovation portion. You're looking at what is the uh, cafeteria section. We've opened that cafeteria up uh, to give it a, a lighter, more open and inviting feel. Uh, you can see the floor tile is in place. Uh, the paint finishes in the kitchen proper are in progress as we speak. As you can see, the critical path for this project was the gymnasium additions. The gym floor is in. It is stained. It is very pretty. <laughs> We belong to Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. This project is essentially complete. Uh, you can see here the scaffold that you see in the picture now has since been uh, started to come down. Uh, this project is done I mean, for all intents. The classroom furniture is being moved in. The admin furniture is being moved in. The principal is occupying that campus now. Uh, we expect the teachers to move in on, on schedule uh, the first part of August. Moving on to John V. Pete Junior High School. And this project project is essentially complete. The classroom furniture is being moved in and assembled. The admin furniture is in and assembled. The principal will have his internet access tomorrow, I understand. The, uh, I mean, so the admin staff is, is beginning the process moving and set that campus up. Flex 14. This project is on schedule. It is scheduled to open for school in August of 2014. You can see it is approximately 40% complete. The exterior masonry is going on. The, uh, the, they're working uh, through the high areas around the back side of the building, uh, which will become significant on the next project you see. The interior of the building, the systems are going in, the fireproofing is in, uh, the roofing is going on, so it is becoming a, a dry working environment uh, a little bit more every day. Flex 16. Uh, this project is on schedule as well. Mm -hmm. This contractor is moving from the front around the other direction, so it looks a little bit different. It is on schedule, as I said. It is scheduled to open for school in August of 2014. 
interior, uh, much the same as Flex School Number 14. This school, the interior systems are in, the roofing is uh, being applied and going on uh, as, as they move around the building. Um, this is uh, some of the minor projects. I'm going to talk about a couple of minor projects we've got going on. Uh, Runyon Elementary site improvements here. Uh, we're, we're adding a more canopy for the bus pickup and uh, parent pickup drop off bus loops. Uh, some improvements in the overall circulation on that campus. As you can see, the canopy is uh, the next scope of work going on right now. They're putting the masonry around the columns. They'll be doing the canopy tops in the next week or so. You can see we've extended the parking lot <coughs> there. Uh, when we extended the parking lot, uh, we also had to extend their play field. The gradient on that site goes down pretty significantly. So we've given them a, a level playing surface. Uh, what you're looking at there is temporary irrigation to establish the grass, grass growth. That grass, the, the seed, the hydro seed has been planted, so we expect to have a good stand of grass by the time school starts. We're looking at the, that same uh, play field from the opposite, opposite end of the school. At Connor High School, the plumbing repairs that uh, have been ongoing uh, moving well. I mean, what you're going to see, because it, it's, it's a hard project to put into pictures, uh, it is going as well as we could have expected it to. Uh, we dug up a little bit of the front yard, got the front yard back in place, so we should have grass growing by the time. Uh, <laughs> what about the hole yet. in the counselor's office? The the hole in the counselor's office is at this point becoming dirt again. So it's in, <laughs> I, it's Where you it's in the work? It's in the process of going back together. Uh, we good. haven't started the walls and concrete yet, but they're still working. <laughs> far below the surface putting the dirt back in. After I saw the bricks held up by two by fours at McCullough, I'm not worried about a hole in the floor. Then I'm, I'm glad you didn't visit Connor High School. That's a different, uh, the same problem in a different direction. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Foster. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Item 6A, financial reports, Dr. Dr. Mr. Rice, if you'll come to uh, present that item. Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, tonight I'm here to present the financial statements for the district for the month of June. <clears throat> uh, the first statement, uh, well, these statements will include the general fund, the debt service fund, our child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at is our balance sheet to show the assets, liabilities, and the fund balances for each one of these funds. Uh, each month, we always like to look at the uh, position of our cash and our investments. And as you can see, the majority uh, of our funds are our external pooled funds and invested. And we also like to track uh, how our property tax collections are coming in. And as you can see, we're, we're bumping the 100% collection percentage. Uh, that does include delinquent collections, but uh, we're bumping that uh, again this year. Uh, the next statement is the income statement. It shows our revenues and expenditures and fund balances for each one of the funds. Uh, looking at the local sources uh, of revenues. As we can see in the general fund and debt service, the majority of those revenues are from property taxes, as we discussed. Uh, food services from food sales, and our self-funded insurance is from our premium contributions. We can also look at uh, our expenditures at the functional level. But one, what I might like to put up, point out is, if you look at the other uses and sources at the bottom of the page, that just reflects the transfers out uh, that we've done from the general fund this year. Uh, $6 million, I mean $7 million for construction pro projects, $1 million of that being for the road that, that we put in, and then also $3 million transfer to the self-funded insurance. Uh, the next uh, statement shows our projected uh, fund balance. Right now we're projecting a decrease of about $2.4 million. But as we're uh, getting the numbers tighter as we get closer to the end of the year, we think that'll come closer to imbalance. Our projection uh, for our debt service fund has not changed since last month, still looking at a decrease of about 3.9. Uh, the projection in child nutrition has not changed either, about $212,000 increase. Uh, looking at our self-funded insurance, uh, for the month of June, we had revenues of $2.3 million, expenses of $2.7 million for a decrease of a little over $450,000. Um, for the year, $26.5 million worth of revenues. Uh, $26.9 million worth of expenses uh, for revenues under expenses of about 
$200,000. Uh, looking at the, the Health and Wellness Center, uh, June participation, 441 visits uh, to the health care uh, health clinic, average of uh, 574 a month. Looking at our uh, $527 million bond referendum, we've currently sold $441 million of that, but we have $86 million authorized but unissued. Uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $433 million of that. We have estimated to complete our projects of the bond referendum about $23 million. Uh, that gives us a, a total projected forecast $456 million, leaving us with a contingency of about $70 million to finish up the program. Uh, investments at the end of the month. Uh, for May, $312 million we had in, invested. At the end of June, it's $290 million. The weighted average maturity of our pools is 57 days. The yield and maturity of our portfolio is 0 0.0933. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, Mr. Ryan or Mr. Cox, on the health insurance, we have two more months remaining. Um, do you think it's going to necessitate moving about another million over? Because generally, the last few months of our year are our, some of our highest, uh, and I, we're I, consistently running almost a half million to dollars and it looks like we may need to move a million over. I, I would think that uh, probably at least a million. And I, <clears throat> I will probably be making a recommendation uh, at the August. You know, each year in August, we move some money surplus uh, to the debt service fund, and I will probably Do it at uh, that time. be uh, adding a line item to help. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Uh, Mr. Sanders, if I may, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Rick Rees. He's our new uh, director of purchasing, and, and I'd like to introduce him. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Glad Welcome. to have you here. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Item 7A, deliberation and executive session regarding <laughs> safety and security audits. Closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by section 551.074 and 551.076 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at a this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. The closed session of the board will now be held. The time is now 6.55. Next item on the agenda is 10A, Receive Required Safety and Security Audit. Is there a motion? Yes, uh, I move that the Board of Trustees accepts the district's safety and security audit in accordance with Texas Education Code Section 37.108 and the Texas School Safety Center Guidelines. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? All opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Item 10B, Local Policy Update 97 Information, Dr. Stockton. I'll ask Mrs. Gladys to present this item. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Y'all are really familiar with getting updates now, reading your little yellow vantage points. This one's the last one from the prior legislative session, and they'll start trickling in from this legislative session. There are only three local policies implicated. I've explained them in your item. we be asked to adopt them on the 16th. If you have questions about them, I'd be happy to field them. Thank you very much, Mrs. Gladys. All right, item 10D. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on July 16th. Wait, I'm sorry. Yes, 10C. One more. You guys need to pick two happy songs ah, to be the best. Thank you so much. Alternate I just and checked right by it. Thank you. You were hoping to skip Item that, 10C, yeah, selection of TASB delegate. Dr. Stockton? 
I'll turn it back over to me. I have a nomination. I do too. Daytron and Jessica. Jessica. All seven of them. Jessica. 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 As, a, yeah. as representing Jessica That's with Daytron as the All alternate. Kids. All right. There's a motion to accept from Mr. Husband's Jessica Powell as the primary and Daytron Williams as the alternate. And I'll second it. Ms. Haynes has seconded that motion. Is there any discussion? <laughs> the only comment I would make is I did contact Jessica and ask if she would be willing, and I didn't get her call back. So. I'm not sure, but I think she probably, at least she's been contacted. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. So Sanders, for doing morning, that. She didn't say no. She didn't say no. <laughs> That's right, Dr. Brown. Thank you for making so, that phone call. Yes, ma'am. Glad night, to. Night. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say or raise your hand. Mm -hmm. And all opposed, no. It's approved unanimously. All right. Now I apologize. Item 10D. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on July 16, 2013. The following members of the board are present. Dr. Mel Brown, Ms. C.J. Haynes, Mr. Ray Sanders, Mr. John Husbands, and Mr. Scott Kidd. For the record, a quorum is present. We are meeting for the purpose of hearing an appeal in accordance with local board policy DGBA. This grievance involves a complaint made against two district staff members by another staff member. Therefore, under the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code sections 551.074 and 551.0821, this hearing will be held in closed session. Everyone not associated with this hearing should now leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 8.11 p.m. and we're going to allow about five minutes to